So the koi are looking nice and happy this morning. They've had a feed. I did actually set the, the uh, feeder up with Saki Balance in there. So I set that up to go off once a day on its minimum feed. No, twice a day at nine o'clock and at three o'clock, just on its minimum feed, just to feed them twice a day. So they are happy, nice and cozy. 10.5 minimum. Um, it's currently saying this is at 13.8 and it's a minimum it's been is 11.7 so the temperatures are keeping great but obviously the air temperature in here is not enough to counteract by the looks of it the heat loss of this pool and I think the biggest heat loss it can't be the air can it to here it's going to be underneath I think where it's touching the ground is, cons you know, it's significantly colder, which I'll try and demonstrate. If I do this, 10.2. Hmm, 10.3, now that's kind of, oh no, that's right. So it's actually the same temperature as the wall of the water lot that you've dragged it to. So if you go off different surfaces, the wall look is 7.7. .7. The polycarb <laughs> inside is the same, but that block's not. So That's 9.1, you see. So I think that degree or so lower temperature of the ground is draw, dr constantly drawing that warmth out of the um, air, obviously, because that's what it's that's what it's going to do. So the blocks will, and the concrete will. So because it was so open, and I knew I wasn't going to insulate it or close it off because it's indoors. I thought about putting something down more significant than this felt underneath there's a felt underlay but I didn't think of anything more so in a way I kind of probably made a mistake there because I did decide to do something more so uh, so yeah anyway the koi are happy seem happy at that So I'm going to keep the food trickling in a little bit and just keep them ticking over. And I want to show you something outside. You notice it's dark. This is a complete surprise today. Woke up in Nottingham to this cow. A good few centimetres. So good, a good seven centimeters or so of snow so we're at the actual pond which that sail shade I normally keep above the pond that was really saggy so uh, got it off I've just uh, whacked all the snow out of it and um, just hooked it over the back of the pond Sorry, my uh, shower. As you can see, so you can see where it was shading. But the weight of it, I didn't like it. So this is the first time I've kept it open like this. So it's all enclosed anyway. So herons can't do anything. And I've scraped the snow off off there the fish aren't they aren't doing anything today so this will be around about 7 degrees this wasn't forecast
a bummer. It's a shame it, it's a shame it can't happen on Christmas Eve. Why couldn't this be Christmas morning waking up to this? It's a white Christmas. I bet you it won't be cold at Christmas. It'll be bloody warm and mild and wet. But anyway. Have you had good snow, guys? Well, your pond's looking like at this time of year with a bit of snow. I literally did this yesterday. Literally yesterday. My fans were freezing. I got the balls off and I did this. Oh, I can see, see a fish. You can see a fish at the bottom there. Just mooching on by. I need to... Uh, how do I say? I need to move the thermometer so I can see the top of it more but it's hooked up to an app anyway but it just means that if I'm ever here I can't really see it but I probably couldn't anyway so I've just seen a fish swim around so you know it's not in torpor a good time to um, have a look to see how well your house is insulated <laughs> obviously greenhouse is not heated the roofs you would expect to be full of snow if you drop back and have a look at your own you can maybe see where uh, it's got snow on it see next door I've got a log burner because the chimps kept the chimney stack lovely and uh, warm lot with some rising heat obviously through it all same with this side as well these have on this side look they've got it so look at the where the snow's melted you can tell on this side they haven't because look at look at that snow on the top of the chimney look and you can see and Teddy's getting out in the snow that Teddy, he's been rolling around like a madden. Oh, Teddy, you coming in? I have had a roll. I'm going to come in now and get warm. Summer. So I'm going to go in now and get some breakfast. It's just a shame it's not Christmas. But hey oh, that's the way it goes. God, bring back summer. Bring back summer. Seriously, sitting out here warm and getting sun. Well, it's a lovely day here in Nottingham. Beautiful, what can I say? Koi magazine, Koi Talk magazine binders come. I've just got to get some back issues. I've got a few in there now, so I've filled it up. I've got from one to eight, and then I've got a break, or and then I've got 26. 27 and 28 now so if you don't know what this is guys it's Koi Talk and it's a magazine that's produced every month by Chris Wall and Ricky Stoddart Koi Wholesale really good really informative some crack cracking articles and illustrations, photos of koi, and appreciation, you name it. It's in there, so I'd recommend it if you go to their um, if you go to their the Koi Talk website and uh, subscribe. I think it's five five ninety five a month delivered, so it's worth definitely worth doing. And, yeah, what can I say? It's um, a week to Christmas. Or a week before Christmas. The koi are still quiet. I need to move the thermometer, actually, that's under there. Um, God, I haven't done it yet. Oh, there they are, look. In fact, the 
skimmer's not going off at the minute. Oh, there's Chagoy. The big Chag. Oh, the water's... The, the skimmer's... Skimmer line's gone off. So let's see if I can... Mild today. See if I can get them up to have a look at them. Chago looks like it's knocked its side. Being as the skin line is off, I'm going to clean it out. There we go. And this time of year, I can literally just get away. We've given it a knock because there isn't a load of algae and green stuff being collected, so on and so forth. So, um, let's give my basket back in. That's ready to go again. It's going to move away because obviously now the cupboard up, they're going to be a little bit more weary, obviously. Ooh, a bit of wind in there, but it's nice to see the sun. Proper winter's day that isn't kind of massively cold. I think we're at about 10 degrees today. So I've got my drinking hand, so a little bit of maintenance there. I probably could do with cleaning the filter out, but I can't be bothered. I might do it in a bit. There's Teddy! Teddy! Down the garden, black dog. Was my mum's, but my mum passed away in March, as some of you know, so I inherited him, I took him on. They were all good fun. So what I'm gonna do, no, I'm not gonna do it, because my hands are slippy. I nearly dropped the glass, I've only got one hand. I'm just gonna move that for now. A bit safe. I'm kind of a bit weary like that because I've not got my side up. I don't want, I just get a bit nervous that one of the dogs might fall in. So it's going to be a bit weary of that. In fact, I'm just going to put that there just in case I can't grab that yet because my hands, I've got one hand. So I'll leave that there because I do get got to watch the old safety pond safety oh my dog's been in there again nightmare so what is on my mind is being as it's winter I have managed now the pond water on the 5k pool in the greenhouse is now 12 degrees C the average temperature in the Koi house is 13, 14 degrees C. So it's just taking that bit of temperature away from the water. Uh, here we are. Oh, lovely and toast. If we come in, I've got no drama. I always shit my pants when I first come in. They're doing well, four in there. Have a look at the koi in here. I've actually moved where the outlet points now to get it going straight across. Like so. So I've got central disturbance, not circulation. So there's no one way around that the fish can go now, if you know what I mean. It's actually going across. The water's going that way, it in there and going both ways. So there's some, oops, just this, there's some food gone in, look. So yeah, what I am thinking we well, not thinking, which is kind of on my mind. There's the temperature, they just on about 12.1 has been the minimum, 12.3 the max, and it's 12.3 now. 
the actual air temperature in the greenhouse currently is 16.3 which I find hard to believe to be honest with you so I don't think these are terribly accurate there's probably a degree or between a there's probably probably a, a, a leeway of three degrees on these I would say I don't know they said it's been 13.8 minimum in here and 17.5 maximum I only reset this a couple of days ago the temperature in here now it certainly says it's 12 12 14 15 so let's see what it is down here yeah it's saying it's 16.2 in here at the moment and it's maximum has been 16.5 minimum 13.1 so they're both kind of very similar as you can see and the pond water to achieve 12.1 in here 12.3 that it is now so so this has got Saki Akari balance going in now I've got the sack that I got from the Newark Koi show I've got got a good uh, art you know a good before date on it so I'm on balance now I've been for a couple of weeks the feeder is now topped up so they've had one week when I went to when I went on holiday for a few days that was last week then they've had this week so this is the second good week on the balance and what I've noticed is the waste in the filter is definitely um, it's hard to see but there's obviously still waste in a good number but it looks more digested um, so yeah it looks grainier definitely grainier and when I did the first clean out last weekend and I drained this down it was far easier because it was lighter weight so it got sucked out more it weren't as heavy and big um, so that's proved to me that already the Saki Akari is proving to be more digestible so um, so yeah now I did do a nitrite test and my nitrite is around here now about 0.25 now k1 which has got k1 media in there it does take a lot more a lot longer to get on top of nitrite with plastic media um, so I'm thinking I know that in the summer I really want to hit this pond with some food and these fish in here so I want to maximize it so I'm going to be struggling a bit so what I'm been playing about in my mind is how am I going to do a moving fluid bed how am I going to do it because I'm not blessed with space even though I have got quite a bit of space in here now the obvious place for me is where that is I'm thinking of um, sitting that to be the main support there and building off having a couple of legs and having something on top of here and then pumping taking um, a T off that and coming up coming up into the bottom of the fluid bed and then have it coming out of a pipe and then coming out and the pipe just you know just well just coming out and going in um, at first it would just probably just be coming out of a spire and a pipe just coming in at a high level and splashing in but obviously that's not ideal because you get a splasher so I would probably make a bend and to you know come out with pipes and come in lower down but yeah it's not easy then I've got to find another place for the feeder and if I can get that going now 
and then get get a 25 litre bag of k1 in there now at least i'm going to get an head start come spring because i can get that going in the next month or so and then obviously that's going to start maturing and work away and tumble in there and stuff and get get maturing it's going to be slow because the water's at 12 degrees see i know that but it's all going to be set up as opposed to thinking bloody hell my nitrite levels are through the roof i can't feed anymore and be stuck um now the capacity with k1 i think they recommend that you only you have 25 percent of k1 taking up the space in your moving bed so obviously 25 percent if, if, if i've got for example i was thinking of using a tool i could i was thinking of moving this or here it would fit actually you know them square you can actually get square water butts and they've only got a footprint i think of about a foot square and then the the tall and thin i was thinking of just pumping into one of them and just sitting it there i know it sounds a bit crude but it would definitely fit here in this square i could pull them over here sit it straight in and just pump into it pump into that and then the actual height would be here and then go in and i won't even need to move the feeder but then i'd struggle accessing the feeder so it gets more problematic don't it as you start your brain starts ticking um so the way i kind of work is my brain works in a way that i think right what am i prepared to do at this point obviously i can't get in an ideal world i would have a big fluid bed in there a big square and i'd be able to get 75 liters of k1 in it but it's not going to be possible now if i have a hundred liters a hundred liter water butt stood there i'd get 25 liters straight away in there a 25 liter bag i think they're about 37 quid at the minute get that in there and then i could get another 25 liter bag and then start once it's maturing start adding it in and then maybe push that because it's tall because it's it'll be tall it give me quite a bit of space in there and i could maybe push it to more than 25 percent so i might be able to get i don't know 30 35 40 liters of k1 in there and it still tumble effectively and then the other the rest of it i could maybe squeeze into this I don't know so that's where my brain's at I and mean, it is something you kind of want to do isn't it but you're not prepared I don't know what a ball ache what a liberty anyway I could take this off this pump here and just cut it there or just disconnect that rubber there disconnect this rubber and disconnect this and have a three inch go three inch straight into three inch into a square tub there sat on some of this in there but um but yeah I, I don't know i'm thinking that if you can go 25 percent to per 100 liters i mean to me an 100 liter i think they're 100 liters well i might have to have another check on that i thought there was 100 liter the uh, vertical tubs i think they're 100 liters so that means technically i can should only be able to get 30 liters of k1 into that now will 30 liters of k1 be enough to maximize the amount of food i want there and the amount of fish i want in five thousand liters because if it's not i'm not gonna have no uh you know more potential yet then i'll be looking at then pushing off a shower filter on another pump which i don't really want to go there 
and that would mean that I've only got that so I don't know a bit of uh, food for thought will 30 40 litres of K1 be enough well they've had that food already happy days now to conclude this video guys that's where my brain's at i'm going to tell you what my um electric bill has been i've had my electric bill for my home you've seen what i've got so my electric bill has been 467 pound for this month oh my god i've had a look at my bills and january's bill last year when i didn't have this and I was, I had the 500 litre grow pool, this. I had that hooked up to the inline heater at 24 degrees. That cost 300, and, so my bill last January, which would be similar to this bill, I think, or similar to this time of year, it was 327 for 500 litres. So the difference is, I managed to achieve about two centimetres average in there for about five fish at 24 degrees this time last year okay so now i haven't got that but so now it's costing me 120 pound more but the prices have gone up in the last year as well and it's just going up now but i'm heating all of this and as i've said in previous videos i've now got no condensation on the wall it feels lovely in here it's a lovely environment and for me as a person to have the plants are responding and looking better um and i've got this to 12 and this to 12 so i've got 7,000 liters at 12 degrees c as opposed to 500 liters at 24 degrees c and i've got four fish in there and i could get more in there and i've got one two three four five six and i've got eight fish in there at the moment and I've got the outdoor pond, which is probably at about seven and a half, eight degrees at the moment. It might have gone up a bit, a little bit more mild. So, what to do? What to do? Things we do for a hobby, eh? Look at the muck in this lot. That's just slowly bubbling away. It don't produce anything in the day but at night it obviously just trickles over and look at that look at that working a bloody tree at standpipe with bubbling clarity in here is great and so in here to be fair i think i've just got to move that line over a bit because just i think it's facing over here too much so yeah core you're looking happy bit of nitrite in the pond dabbling on that yeah, what am I going to do? Can I get this to work and sit up there somehow? And use this plastic fiberglass type tub in there instead. I mean, I think that's going to be holding 100 litres. So that would definitely get a bag of K1. Um, mm, I've even been thinking of making shall I make a pumped like a pressurised one but no I'd need to seal the lid then have a proper seal down lid so yeah thanks for watching guys um, this will probably be out after Christmas so I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. I might do a short video actually, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. But um, I hope you had a great Christmas. Um, I hope it's been a good one. Christmas isn't always a good time for everybody. I know that, I lost my mum this year. So for me this year, it's gonna be a difficult one because you have memories and mum with me last year. So it's not gonna be, you know, I might look all nice and buoyant, but it's not what you see on the surface there's a lot going on inside with people especially at this time of year it's not all happy clapping so i hope you know you've made the best out of christmas 
I hope you've had a good one and I hope you're coy and your fish are behaving have some comments in the bottom let me know how you're getting on let me know what's going off um, I do look at some of your pages so if you do watch I make a comment because sometimes I see a comment and I think oh that sounds history I'll go and have a look and have a browse at other people's YouTube channels and stuff like that so hit the subscribe button if you haven't already many thanks if you have it's much appreciated please tap on the like button if you haven't already it just helps me out it just shows that you're there and you you know YouTube like it i think they then start recommending your videos and stuff like that see you on the next one